Look, when discussing the greatest up-and-coming YouTube channels, Pick Your Battles Collecting has to be included in the conversation. The host is funny, smart, and really sexy. If you're into video games, technology, and physical media, you have to give this channel a shot. What's good, folks? I wanted to talk about uh, a topic that's been on my mind for a while. I love collecting video games, and I, I hunt several times a week. like to pop on to Whatnot at least once or twice daily because there's great deals on there. But I want to know if any of the rest of you that collect games or are interested in gaming especially if you're you know in the above 30 crowd and you've experienced gaming you know pretty much all of your life and if your thoughts about it or your approach to it have changed or your philosophy because I know mine has and I find myself in a bit of a, a particularly just kind of weird space with gaming again I still love gaming whenever I get a controller in my hand I, you know I have fun I get immersed I really enjoy it but as much as I like to buy games and I like to keep abreast of gaming culture and, and what's going on, I don't actually game a whole lot. I think right now, if you were to break down my entire time gaming every month, I, I'm honestly probably less than five hours a month. Sometimes I don't think I game at all. And there's a reason for that. I mean, one, when I was a kid, you know, I could just game all night, no problem. You know, I could, you know, my parents would go to bed 9 o'clock at night. Man, I'd fire up my Nintendo or my Atari, man. I'd, I'd be going until 3 or 4 in the morning, and I'd finally, you know, get too tired, crawl into bed. I didn't have anything to worry about the next day. You know, but as life changes and obligations change, I think it, it follows suit naturally that gaming would change for you. Now, <clears throat> when I was in my early adulthood, my early 20s, I was married to my ex-wife. And like a lot of new couples, newly married couples just starting out, we didn't have a lot, didn't have a lot of money. So there were a lot of entertainment avenues that were just kind of prohibitively expensive for us. So, you know, we try to entertain ourselves the best we can and for me that was gaming I didn't get to buy games a whole lot because didn't really have the discretionary income for it but what I did have I would play the hell out of I mean pretty much to the exclusion of all else and the reason I'm telling you this is I, I think my gaming addiction and I did have an addiction hit its peak in my early adult years and I game to the exclusion of all else. If I wasn't at work, I was gaming. And you hear a lot of folks, you know, making light of the whole, the woman hears the PlayStation beep and loses her shit. But there's, there's some truth to that and there's some validity to their reaction, you know. I, nobody in a committed relationship wants to feel ignored or feel like they're second place to anything. And my ex-wife, she's really the sort that she likes She likes to be out. She likes to be doing things. She liked, you know, even if it was something that didn't cost much, she just wanted to be out doing something. I've always been a bit more of an introvert and more of a homebody, so I didn't have that particular compulsion. And we would fight about it a lot. We fought about a lot of things. But I really, truly did alienate her. My gaming addiction took time away from my marriage at the time it took away a lot of the time that I could have been spending with my oldest son that I had by her and it just caused so much strife and negativity in uh, my marriage at that time and looking back on it it definitely wasn't worth it um, now I'm not giving my ex an, an excuse for, for cheating on me which is what she did multiple times and that's pretty much why our marriage ended but I will say that I didn't exactly give her a reason not to. I didn't provide her with anything she felt was worth building or maintaining, you see? 
in gaming addiction, while it doesn't destroy your body, like like a drug addiction or a substance addiction, it can have all sorts of bad effects uh, on your family, on on your friends. You know, it can deteriorate, cause your uh, relationships to deteriorate to a degree. So anyway, as I've gotten older, you know, I definitely got my gaming as far as playing goes addiction under control. I think there's certainly an argument to be made that I'm currently battling an addiction as far as collecting goes, and I've been through several phases of that. But I approach gaming in my middle age years a whole lot differently. I did remarry, and I have two wonderful children by my current wife. So now my rule is with gaming. I pick up a controller only if my wife is maybe at work and my kids are asleep like I have to, or I have the house to myself period because if those criteria aren't met then my priorities are family household responsibilities then you know whatever personal things I have going on then gaming like gaming is at the bottom of the list and the problem is when you're a grown man with a family and a full-time job you know if you put things in that order that doesn't really leave time for gaming because uh, let's face it, as you get older, you get tired a lot quicker, too. <laughs> so, you know, by the time I do have a little bit of free time left, you know, it's like I, I just tend to spend it with the family. And I feel really guilty when I game, too. That's a, that's a new thing for me. Because uh, there's always this nagging doubt in the back of my head that's like, you're wasting your time. You could be doing so much uh, more in terms of being productive with your time. So even when the wife is gone, the kids are at school, man, if I pick up that controller, I'll, I'll play maybe sometimes hour, hour and a half, but I feel bad about it the whole time, man. It's just, and there's a lot of you that's probably going to say, then why do you even bother, man? That's a good question. I'm trying to figure that one out. But what I want to know is, has, has gaming changed for you? It, it, if you've been a gamer all your life, has it changed for you? Like, what was it like when you were a kid versus an adult with responsibilities? Now, I, I mentioned that I have battled gaming addic or game collecting addiction. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, I could talk more about it, but check out um, Iowa Retro Gaming Dad's channels. He has a whole series of videos about the topic. It's really astute, goes really in, in, in depth. And I'll probably tag him when I upload this. But I've built collections and I've sold collections. Uh, I build to a point where, like, I'll have these thousands of games. Then the realization hits me, realistically, am I going to play, like, 99% of these? No. And then I sell them. And it's not... And I tend to sell them in, like, one fell swoop. I'll take them to a gaming store or something like that. Yeah, it's completely irrational. I know. Believe me. Um instead of selling them piecemeal where I can make much more money because frankly I just can't be arsed to sit there and do that and ship the packages and all that. Oh, uh, I do resell a bit, but I haven't done it in quite a bit with any consistency just because the shipping end of it's a pain in the ass. But yeah, you know, as fun as gaming can be, as, as, fun, as much as it's a useful tool for escaping the pressures of real life and, and maybe putting some of your stresses with life in, in the background, at least for a short period of time, yeah, it can be really cathartic, but it's really, really easy to let it take over. Yeah, especially if, if you're the sort that has an addictive personality and that does run in my family uh, especially substance abuse my I've never dealt with that thank God I think I got that from my mom's side of the family but almost all the men in my family they're they've been drug addicts alcoholics and I just never developed the proclivity for that but the addictive aspect of my personality is still there and it has gone full bore into games and it used to be game gaming and now it's game collecting so yeah i definitely have a very strange and complicated relationship with gaming as a middle-aged man anyway i would just like to hear your thoughts on that and between now and then remember folks pick your battles because not every hill's worth dying on take it easy fake joe rogan here Thanks for checking out the Pick Your Battles Collecting YouTube channel. You knuckleheads know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe. Help the channel become a success so Chance can quit his retail job.